Okay, great. We have uh, Aditya, Alonia, uh, Anirudh, um, Hartik, right? Uh, Sahana, Samrit, Zena. Did I miss out uh, any other student? Okay. Okay. So I just want to welcome everyone. Um, uh, welcome to this uh, uh, Python uh, presentation. I mean, you could have just uh, finished up um, with your Python code and your uh, program, but um, we want to give you an opportunity to share uh, your invention and the creation. And uh, it gives you a good platform to also like present and enhance your communication skills. So I believe that, uh, I mean, I whatever program I create, um, it needs to hit a lot of notes. And uh, what I've seen uh, with the college uh, admissions uh, that that students who have a passion project or who, who do something to follow their passion and show tangible results of their outcome have better chance at getting in, right? Uh, my student uh, who, was, uh, who, who was my research program, who mastered Python, she got into uh, Stanford computer science. And um, a lot of my students um, have been doing AI projects. I'm introducing cybersecurity. And uh, they did a lot of AI-related uh, research in, in as well. But everything, it's, it's like foundational to know Python or R. R is not that popular, but Python is. And uh, we, we want you to be um, like, nobody is an expert, but at least uh, good enough to figure out what the libraries uh, are needed and like master Python, right? So that's why we're here and let's get started. Uh, who do we have? We have uh, somebody who joined first. So let's go with Anirudh. Anirudh, uh, you want to share your screen and start presenting? Yeah. Can yes. you see me? Fine? Yes, I, I see. I'm going to turn myself off. And let me see if I can turn everybody else's. Um, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, let me do the speaker. Yes. And go ahead, Anirudh. Um, so let me just get the... Uh, no Yes, uh, we see your screen, Anirudh. Yes. So this is my project. I did text-to-speech with Python and uh, Google's API. So um, this uh, this program is just a text-to-speech text-to-speech generator, and so it allows users to input any text uh, through a friendly user interface and then convert it into speech by saving it as a file and then playing it back using the uh, operating system's default uh, like player or music player. And so you can enter your text and then you can apply like an accent to it and you can adjust the speed uh, from fast to slow. So how, how did I go about this? So getting the text-to-speech to work was pretty easy. Um, once I found GTTS or Google text-to-speech, uh, it was really easy to work with. I found one website where it had like kind of a tutorial code. So that served as my uh, kind of my backbone for my entire project. And so I built off of that. The tutorial code just simply helped me to understand how it, uh, GTTS worked, uh, what was going on, what variables were needed for it to run. Then the next thing I needed was a user input because I realized after, after I made the entire program, running in the console itself, I realized that this isn't something that everyone's gonna have to run the code. So I used a tkinter to make like a separate window for um, my program to run in. So 
in that I realize like it works completely different because uh, T Kinter is something called a main loop, meaning it uh, it just keeps looping the program. So that is what allows the text box to stay open and the user can enter any text, um, delete the text, enter new text. Uh, after generating the speech, uh, they can keep the window open and use the same button to generate a new text. Um, so yeah, that was something I had to change about my code. Uh, then the next thing was the multi operating system functionality. I wanted to make sure that it worked not only on Windows, which is what I'm using currently, but also uh, Mac. And obviously we can't forget Linux, um, although I'm not sure who would be using that. Yes. Okay. Um, are you done or you still have some more? Yeah, I have a few more slides. Okay, please go ahead, sorry. So um, where was I? The operating system, yeah. So I had to use a separate library to make sure the, the save function and playback function worked on any operating system. So this was my process. So first I needed to figure out how to convert the text to speech, which was using the GTTS module. Uh, and then I needed to understand what the different variables meant, meaning um, like the speed variable was pretty self-explanatory, but uh, there was something called TLD, which is top level domain. And so this basically tells, uh, this is like a manual way of telling Google uh, or the API uh, where you're located. And so based on where you're located, uh, it will change the accent that the text is generated into speech with. So there's different codes for different domains like code.uk or US or code.au for Australia. Um, so I needed to understand that. Uh, then I needed to find a suitable UI module. Uh, one very common one was tkinter. So I used that, there was a lot of tutorials on that. So I finally applied everything. I developed the window, uh, the UI, and implemented the program into it. So it allows me to save the MP3 file and then play it. And so this was my final result. So uh, can you guys see my mouse? Um, your mouse, yes, yes. yes. So here, of course, we're just importing the libraries, tkinter, gtts, and os is the um, module that I use to have multi-os functionality. So os will just tell uh, the computer to open the application, the file with the default application for that type of file. So mp3 on my computer would be opened with Groove Music. Um, I don't know what it is on other computers, but you get the point. So here, uh, it's just a function for converting the text. First, we check that none of the text boxes or selection menus are left blank. And if they are, we give them a error message. Uh, if everything's filled out, then we have the uh, TLD codes. Right, but the user inputs them as a string from the menu, and then that is translated into the respective code and saved. And then same thing for the speed, which is either fast or slow, but you can only have slow, true, or false. Then we feed it to G. Then we feed all the settings to GTTS. Uh, the text is the user text box. Language is uh, by default set to English, and the accent. And then the speed, we translate the text, we save the text as text-to-speech.mp3, and then we get the file path. Now, this will be so that we can tell the user where we've saved their file so that they can refer to it later. And then uh, we play the message. So depending on Windows or Mac OS and Linux, 
there's different ways to play the um, the converted file uh, with their default applications. And so here on this side, we're oh. So here on this side, I'm just using tkinter to make a window and making all the widgets like the text boxes, labels, and the convert button, and then placing the widgets in a frame inside the window to have it all centered. And then uh, placing that frame into the main window and main loop is just so that the program stays open. The window doesn't just open and then close immediately. Yeah. Yeah, so sounds good, very good. Um, so this was Anirudh and um, we have gamified this. So you are going to vote for the best uh, Python uh, program, okay? And and everybody is expected to ask two questions on the chat, okay? So please, uh, you you your presence and everything will be judged based on the questions that you ask. So that was Anirudh. Everybody, a big round of applause, virtually and everything. Uh, Anirudh, uh, very good effort. And I, I really appreciated the questions that you asked and the depth in which uh, you have learned. So that's an amazing, amazing um, effort that you've put in, okay? So that was Anirudh. Please, um, we have um, assigned to uh, vote for the best uh, Python project. Okay, so um, I know that somebody joined. Um, like, let's go with Aditya. Aditya, and also please don't leave immediately after your presentation. You're supposed to ask two questions from other people's projects. Got it? It's not enough if you just learn about your project. We want you to learn from others as well. Okay, so Aditya, uh, go ahead and present. And please, uh, if I didn't mention the rubric, you have about three to four minutes to present. Got it? Keep it crisp. Uh, like, make it, make it like, crisp and uh, terse and to the point. Okay, so uh, let's go with Aditya. Aditya? All yeah. right. Hello, Auntie. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to share my screen today as I have not yet gotten a webcam and my MacBook screen or MacBook camera does not work. Uh, okay, so will you be able to present without your video? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. All right. So my project was a base 64 encryptor and decryptor. So it has three different modules in it, one that encodes it and uh, one that decodes it. And then since the script is constantly running over and over after you finish using one of these, uh, there's another module to end that script. So this is the table of contents, the overview, the descriptions, and then the credits. So the overview, this is the full code block. And in the beginning, I have to import base64 in the system, which we'll go into. These are, again, the descriptions of the modules, so descriptions, a module is in depth. So for the encoder, what happens first is you have to import base64 in the system. And then this is the entire encoded string for the encoder. And then on the right, it's the decoder. And the main text UI is the actual print screen that asks which options you can use. And then to input, this is the choice that is defined. And then if you get the choice, it executes the encoded string. And then it else if else it restarts the script. And then these are the credits for the actual PowerPoint. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, so any questions for Aditya? Uh, please post the questions on the chat. Uh, we want you to learn from others as well and give them feedback as well. And please, there is the uh, form. Uh, I want you to fill out and pick uh, the best project. Okay, so we have a uh, Hardik. Uh, you want to go Hardik? Okay. So. Uh, yes. we, we see, see you, Hardik. So let me share my screen. As yes, Hardik, okay. we can see your screen, Hardik. Yeah. Slideshow. Yes. Yeah, slightly yeah. perfect. Okay. Oh, that's the very end. No problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, my code is a binary search algorithm uh, using Python. 
So basically, a binary search algorithm is an algorithm that is, it's a program used and it's used to sift through numbers and search up numbers after an input by the user. So there are multiple ways you can do this. I've chosen a random generator. So I randomly generate uh, numbers and then that would, then you can sift through that. It can be made with the pre-made, but I chose random. So some numbers do appear multiple times. So there was a lot of online research that I used for this because there's a lot of stuff that went into making it, especially with the CSV. Since uh, my CSC is a little different since I'm on a MacBook and and the internet didn't give the exact thing I wanted. So I had to use, so I like lots of trial and error combining what I used and uh, what the internet gave me. So I used some outside code as a base to make the code. So the goals for this is not only to learn Python, but to show that I can pro problem solve creatively and I'm not afraid to try new things. So, cause lots of trial and error that went into this project. So like, and it really led to many errors. So there was lots of new things I had to try. So how to get this, I had to figure out the random number generator using CSVs. So it basically what would happen is that every time I'd run the project, I'd have to make a new CSV every single time that had a random list of numbers. These numbers came in ordered pairs. So, cause and then the functions that were needed, I needed two functions um, to see, because I have two uh, numbers that came in ordered pairs. So I had to look for number ones or number twos. And then the if statements at the end, if the user inputted, either they want to search for number one or number two, and what was put in uh, and what would come out. This, these were for the if statements. So basically what happened here is that uh, it was a mixture of functions, loops, and CSVs that all led to the making of a binary search algorithm. When the code is run, a CSV is made with a list of random ordered pairs. So like a completely new CSV will be made every single time. There are about 100 ordered pairs, and the numbers are, numbers are random, numbers from 10 to 100. So there are numbers that repeat within both. Two columns, number one and number two. These are the two functions that the user can either search. They can search either one, or they can search for number two. And then the user can enter which number they'd like. So if they want to search number one, it'd be like, okay, I'll uh, enter number one. And then if they want to search for number two, they'd be like, uh, okay, I'll search for number two. And then uh, th whatever they search up, that ordered pair will show up. So the project, uh, it helped me gave me the basis for the project, but not the whole thing. So this, the conclusion is that the course uh, helped with the project as it gave the basis for the project, but didn't give the whole thing. So I couldn't just copy paste code we learned from class for this. And the mentor really helped as he answered questions that we had that made the code really clear. So when we had problems, he'd answer it and uh, clear up any doubts that I had. So since CSUs were a big part and I had trouble with that, he cleared up all the doubts I had and the project became easier. Um, that's it, so, uh, thank you. Kudos to you, Hardik. Uh, that was really, really good. I mean, the, I mean, uh, thanks for sharing your journey, and uh, it shows what a driven uh, kid you are. That you went after learning something, and I'm immensely proud of you. So, everybody, a big round of applause to Hardik. Please, uh, you've got to answer two questions on the chat uh, box, and also please stay till the end to encourage your classmates and ask them questions. And also, this is like like a reality TV style where you're going to vote for each other's projects and you're going to get a, a gift card. And also, uh, I want to share that Renaf once won the most uh, dedicated, I mean, every kid is dedicated, but uh, the teacher's pet, no, I didn't mean to say that, but Renaf gets the most uh, spirited participant award. You will get a $25 uh, gift card via email. I'm sorry, via mail. Okay, so we have a $50 gift card for the best Python projects, which you are going to vote. So please don't vote for yourself, uh, vote for your friends. Okay, so next up we have uh, Renaf. Renaf, go ahead, Renaf. Uh, can you give me like a minute? <laughs> Sure. Um, should we go to somebody else and come back to you if that's okay? Or yeah, I'm just I'm just setting something up. No problem. Take it up. Uh, let's go over to um, wait. Anjan, Anjan, you want to go? Um. Yeah. 
Sure, please go ahead. Um, just a quick question before I start. Uh, I don't share like the actual code I did, right? Okay. I just share my presentation. Yes, yes, yes. Certainly. Okay. Yeah. 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 We want to see what what problem you're trying to solve, how you went about it, and everything. Got it? Yeah, I'm sharing my screen right now. Okay, sure. Uh, yes, uh, Anjan, we see your screen. Okay, yeah, I'll turn on my camera in a sec. There you go. Yes, um, we see you. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, Um. so I'm making the Python. I decided to make the alarm clock, right? Uh, my name is Anjan Pada, and I'll be presenting how I did it. All right, so the background is I'll be displaying my code piece by piece, allowing you to see the things I did step by step and any problems that could have occurred along the way. Create a window. So this code that I did right here on the top is um, is how I was able to create the window. It What it does basically is it allows me to um, switch, it automatically switches my tab and it will have its, this alarm clock will have its own separate window. All right, now I, my, the next part was to create the labels. The code on the left shows how I created the labels and what this like what this part of the code does, it creates the um, the current time that's happening like as um, on your computer and it also creates the alarm time to set the alarm to whatever time you want. And it says Arial over there. That's a font I decided to use, Arial size 20. So updating time. This code was a bit more tricky because I needed to um, uh, figure out how to uh, get like the current time and to make it keep on updating. I was able to figure that out eventually with the help of some online resources that were given to me. And this code like lets me update the current time label. So setting the alarm time, basically this allows me to um, uh, have a dip. I made it so that in the window, there's gonna be like a, um, uh, like, so we have the time on the top and then a bit on the bottom, there's going to be a set alarm thing. You click, and then you're going to be able to click that and set your, um, however long you want it to be. Uh, so setting the alarm, this code on the left allows me to, is what I used to set the alarm. And this allowed me to create the alarm label for setting the time. And yeah, another set alarm one. Um, this, this, um, I think all of these together were used to, um, overall set the uh, alarm. Like, I think I used all these, but I just put them separately. So yeah, it wouldn't be too big on the presentation. And this one updates the time label. So this, um, this, this piece of code allows it to like, um, I think it was uh, to keep on, a. I don't know how to word it. Uh. Okay, basically it just updates the time label. That's all I can say right now. And this, the window main loop is, um, it, it makes the window like work in it. Like, so uh, at the first, the first slide that I did is um, ha allows it to, allows the um, window to form. And this um, is like the end part. I'm making it so that um, it, when I click run on the Python, it will teleport me to that window and letting, um, the alarm work basically and this is the result uh, this, this is like the whole code that i took and thank you for listening to my speech uh, very nice anjan i really liked your presentation i don't know which tool you use but it's wonderful and uh, the level of effort that you put in is amazing a big round of uh, applause to anjan and one more thing i want to tell you is this same presentation the reason why i create uh, make you create this is i want you to go back if you're in high school go back to your counselor and give a presentation to them uh, and also your classroom uh, because it's going to help you with your recommendations when it comes to like high school got it they're going to 
to remember uh, that you, you did this project, you went out of the realm of your academics to create this project. So, and then it reflects in your counselor recommendation and also teacher recommendation. Got it? Okay, so next up, uh, two questions for uh, Anjan, please. And of course, I'm gonna uh, post uh, <clears throat> the voting uh, thing. Please vote for the best uh, project uh, that's here. Okay, so let's go with Kavin. Kavin, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, please go ahead. I'll share my screen. Yes, uh, we see you, Kavin. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, please. Yes, we see okay. it. Yeah, click present. Uh, yeah, down. present and present again. Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay, so this was my binary search Python project. And so essentially what it was is a Python binary search algorithm that takes in a CSV file. So a CSV file is a comma separated value file. And it takes it, converts it into a list, which it just makes it a lot more, a lot easier to implement uh, functions and code on it. Sorts it alphabetically, so sorts it from A to Z, and then searches it based on a user input. And the little diagram here kind of explains what a binary search is. It's, um, it's just a more sophisticated way of scientific guessing. And so some background. So this project required a lot of research for me because I initially didn't know what a binary search was or how to perform it. And so I had to do a lot of research on how exactly a bin binary search works, how exactly it works in Python. And through that, I was able to get a basic general understanding, which I was able to use to implement it in my code. And I had to take a different approach from just traditional binary search because a lot of the information that I found through my research uh, was more pertaining to numbers what, whereas I was working with strings. And so I had to modify a little bit and do some extra research on how exactly I could perform a binary search with strings because with, the num with numbers, it's a lot easier since you can perform mathematical functions on it. But with a string, you can't, or a string or a piece of text, you can't really do that. And so it also took a lot of trial and error from my end because I had to constantly keep on going back and re revising it, editing my code because I wasn't able to get it on the first try. And I had to go back, do more research read through the documentation, read through my notes, you know, search up questions online and really figure out what was going on in my code because there's a lot of errors that I, that took me like some, some, some of the errors would take me hours to, to resolve. Um, and so, yeah, to go through a lot of tri trial and error. And so the goals that I wanted to accomplish with this project were to first com successfully convert a CSV file to a list. So again, like I said, it just makes it a lot easier for me to work with rather than just a CSV file. And then I wanted to sort that CSV file alphabetically. This would allow me to perform the binary search on it because um, I was, I'd be able to kind of divide it into two sections and then keep on dividing from there. Next, I wanted to have the user search for a list item. This way the user could input whatever they wanted to search. And then my project would return the position in the index of that list item. And so some of the real world applications of my project are dictionary lookups. So being able to Know the position of a string in a dictionary would help to gather some of its additional properties. Autocomplete and spell check. Phones actually, iPhones or soft phone softwares actually use binary search in order to uh, in order to accomplish autocomplete functions as well as spell check. Uh, genome sequencing, which I thought was pretty cool, is a biotech application of binary search because you can find the position, you can find the location of a certain gene from a group of genes. And then compression algorithms, being able to compress and decre decompress um, certain groups of strings. And so here's my process. So first I had to implement libraries like CSV, which is the built-in Python library to handle CSVs. So it helped me to read and process the, that CSV file and then take enter, which helped to create the user interface for the uh, user. Next, I wanted to read the data from the CSV file and then format it by making it all lowercase. This just, this just helped me to, um, this just helped any sort of issues that would pop up in terms of it being case sensitive. Uh, so I wanted to format it and then remove any extra like brackets or commas or other characters that was, weren't necessarily needed, which makes the whole search process a lot easier for the user. And then I wanted to convert it to a list, which makes it a lot easier to handle. Next, I wanted to define a user search function. This would help me to gather input from the user and use that input in order to place in my binary search function, which is what actually performs the binary search. And I will, I'll show my code in a, in a bit. But essentially, 
the user search function takes the input from the user from the user interface uh, and then the binary search function performs a binary search on it and then returns whatever value of uh, the index or the position that the string is located in and then lastly I wanted to create a user interface or a GUI for the user to enter a, it, to, for the user to enter in a search input so a little greeting and a search bar so here are my results so this is my code um I've added a lot of comments so it makes it a lot easier to understand but essentially I don't know if you guys can see my cursor can you guys see my cursor yes uh yes we can see your cursor. okay 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 so here I have the libraries that I imported and then here I basically this block of texture um basically reads a csv file and uses commas to separate values and then a vertical bar to kind of quote over fields that contain some special characters and so until here is my binary search function this is my first function essentially uh basically searches for the index of the search input um in the converted list and basically using a standard binary search algorithm uh, and then if the search input is not found the function actually returns negative one or otherwise the function will return the actual position in the index of the search input and then we have this second function right here which is the user search function and basically just from a search bar it takes the user input uh, makes a lowercase which just prevents any sort of case sensitive errors and then calls the function or the binary search function which then if the search input is not found so if it returns negative one then it returns the statement input not present uh, or else it will return the index of the search input and then down here is just kind of the code that I used to make the user interface. So I have a window with a welcome greeting that says hello user, and then a little label for a search bar and a search bar under it. And so some things that I've learned, I've learned how to use logic in my code. Um, this was actually something that was very new to me, but it was quite interesting because I was able to kind of come to kind of come about a kind of a series of events. And I was also able to learn about recursive sequences, which is actually how the binary algorithm works. There's two types of iterative and recursive. Recursive kind of just means going back to your previous result and kind of backtracking in a way. Uh, I learned proper coding conventions with things such as file naming, variable naming, and commenting. I also learned problem solving skills, which are really important because I did face a lot of problems. For example, some of the obstacles that I faced were bugs. I faced a lot of bugs and it took a lot of research and um, search online to actually figure out how I wanted to fix my code. And so that was, I think was the hardest part of this whole thing. And understanding certain concepts such as binary search, it was worded very, very um, difficult. It was worded, worded very difficultly in like online. So I had to figure out how exactly it worked and how to implement that into my code. And then certain syntax regarding uh, functions and my user interface. And then at the end, what I accomplished was just a successful algorithm for searching through a list of strings. And thank you. Any questions? Amazing, Kevin. Thank you for uh, sharing uh, sharing this journey with us. Um, and you. it's it's amazing. I mean, it's it's like I really have to uh, t tell myself that hey, these are high school students and not some uh, IT professionals. So great work, everybody. I'm proud of every single one of you. And thanks for sharing um, your struggles and what you learned. So it's it's it's. It's pretty darn amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next up we have uh, wait, Alia. I'm sorry, uh, Aloniab. I'm sorry if I yeah. met your name. Can you please tell me how to rightly pronounce it? Uh, it's Alonia. Alonia. Yeah, please. All right, so my project uh, is also text to speech. And sorry, so uh, so my project was text to speech, and then I used the binary scope and I used uh, the version 3.11 Python. I used PyCharm as my tool. And then uh, so I used the uh, I, this Python code allowed me to convert text to speech using Google APIs. And then the overall uh, result was that it would create an MP3 file in which the, the converted text would play. So this is important because text to speech in Python enables the, con the conversion of written text into spoken words, which can be useful in a wide range of applications, 
such as accessibility, multilingual applications, personalization, automation, human machine interaction, and overall text to speech in Python is an important tool which can enhance the accessibility, the usability, and the functionality of digital applications. So how I started with this was the importation. First, I had to import the Google text-to-speech and then uh, the OS module that would help the Python's operating system play the audio. Oh, and sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't sharing my video. I'll be turning that off. Uh, yes, please. Yes. yes, we see you. Yes. And then following this, I had to input the text so in my text, I just put, I enjoy coding and learning Python. And then you can change the language of the speech using Google's uh, abbreviations. You could use uh, for English, EN, for French, you could use FR and for Spanish, ES. And so the speech, you have to, you have to create the speech and send text and language to the engine. And then you have to mark it uh, slow with false so that the module knows that the converted audio should come out at a fast speed. And then so this saves the converted, this creates the MP3 file and this saves the converted file into an MP3 and it activates the Windows command so that it plays the converted file. And then this was some, this was probably one of the hardest parts about the project, ending the audio. So you would, you'd have to create a code that made the module so that it would close Windows Media Player. And then that was probably the hardest part of the project. And then, so as you can see here, this was my code, line of code for it. And then, it will create an MP3 file. And it will play that file. And then just to make it a bit more complex, I use the, I made another one that uses a function so that you could use, so that you could have an input and output. And this one doesn't require an MP3 file. So this one just plays right out of Python, but still using Google's API. And then I also made another uh, text-to-speech, although this one doesn't use Google API. This one is just an offline one. So it just plays purely off of Python. And that is my project. Thank you. Awesome, Aliana. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I mean, every time, uh, every time uh, I conduct a final presentation, I'm rendered speechless by my students, right? I learn so much from you guys. So I, I really appreciate all the effort that you've put in. I know it's not easy. I'm like just dozing off. I don't know how you guys survived till uh, 9, 9 p.m. Um, like after school, after a long day at school and then coming and learning, but you just did great. Amazing, amazing. So next up we have Rinav. Rinav, you wanna share your project? <laughs> Uh, Rinav, are you able to present your project? Can you hear me, Rinav? Uh, is, is everybody able to hear me? Yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down. There's a lot of thunder here. Yeah, okay, great, great. Um, Rinav, are you here or I can come back to you? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so let's go with uh, the next student, um, Sahana. You want to present your uh, uh, present? I mean, present your project, honey. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let me just share my screen. Yeah. Yes, we see your screen. Um. So this is my project. It's a text to speech. So text-to-speech is an artificial intelligence program that analyzes written text to generate audio outputs that sounds like human speech. It has a wide range of applications and it's mostly used for assistive technology for people with visual or learning disabilities. 
Um, another large issue that comes with workplace is that there are a lot of language barriers, but with text to speech applications, people can communi communicate a lot easier with others. And it can also help unemployment rates since due to the pandemic, there have been high unemployment rates of people with disabilities. Um, so this is just a graph of like the expected amount of people with learning disabilities in 2060. So as you can see, it's increasing and it's been increasing since the 2000s. So this application can really help um, in today's world. So this is a project attributes. Um, I use Python, it's a version 3.11 and I use PyCharm. It can write, recite any text out loud and I use two libraries. Um, so the, my approach to the project was to import um, PyTTSX3, which initializes the text-to-speech engine, and the OS library, which can open any audio file created by the system right away. And to do this, I just created three different functions, a read text, a create audio file, and a read text file. So the difference between all of these is that the, read, the read text file is just going to take in any um, input from the user, and it can synthesize it, and, and it'll be read out loud. The create audio file will then take either a user input or a file name, including its starting and end line numbers, so that you can choose which lines of the file you'd like to be read out loud. It will then save it and play it out loud as an MP3 file. And finally, the read text file is just going to read a file and it'll extract the lines that are specified by the user and then it will change it back into speech. So this is my code for the read text and the create audio file. So as you can see, as I said, it creates um, it creates its engine and then it sets its voices and then it um, says out the text and the same with the audio file, except this time it's going to be splitting up the lines so that it can pit, figure out which lines the user would like. And that is prompted by a while loop, which I'll talk about later. And this is a read text file, which is doing the same thing, except now it's using a file name that the user will give. Um, so to continue the flow of the program, it will obtain the code will obtain the user input using a while loop. So it's a so it's a lot of if else statements, and it will just call the read text or the read the read text file or just the read text function based on the input of the user. And then if the user wants, it can create an audio file that will just have like whatever speech it's saying forever. And this is the while loop that asks all of the, um, that prompts the user to answer any questions. And these are all of the methods that I used in the code, which I can answer if you guys have any questions on it later. Um, and I wanna share like the actual um, code now. Yeah, please do, Sahara. Yeah, so. If I were to play this now, and I want to just say something like, hello, how are you? And I want it to save as an audio file, for example. Hello, how are you? Wow. And then a file will pop up, and in the output file, Hello, how are you? Everything is saved exactly. Now I have a file here that has three lines of code, but let's say, for example, I only want hello, how are you again to be played, so like the first line. I would play it and I would say file instead of this time, and the file name is called files. And if I want just the first line to be played, I would say the starting line number is one and the ending is again one. And if I want to create an audio file again, I would say yes. Hello, how are you? And this time it's coming from files. That's the MP3 name. So if you play it again, hello, how are you? It's help. It's just the first line of the code. So you can play around with it. You can have a CSV file instead, or you could just play the file to be exact. And because I it's in a while loop, if you ever write something wrong in it, so it'll just say invalid choice. And it'll keep going until you get it right. Um, so that's my project. Awesome job, Sahana. Uh, very interesting. And thank you for the demo. Amazing. Amazing. So everybody, please ask Sahana questions and stay till the end. And we want to vote for the best Python uh, project. You, you guys get to vote. Okay. So next up, um, let's go with Samrit. Samrit, are you ready? Uh, yeah, sure. Just give me a second to share my screen. Sure. Oh, I forgot Rina. Rina, keep going. Yeah, I, I can do it now. 
Um, yeah, Samrit, uh, can we go after Rina? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's okay. No problem. Yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah, so this was my project. I decided to do the alarm clock. Uh, the alarm clock took a set time in 24 hour format. And once the time was reached, it, it alerted you using a displayed message and sound. And this is usable in real life for those who want to complete an activity by a certain time or be alerted to prepare for something. And it can also help shift attention, stay on schedule and just like keep track of time as it is an active timekeeper with date time and time modules. So the problem solving process, the process which I completed this, uh, it had three main parts, which were the importing of the libraries, the creation of the while loop to keep track of the time and dates and set up all the background stuff and the creation of the designed user interface or UI with the main library, Kinter. The libraries were used to carry out many of the major functions in the project to make it easier to read and more organized. And as I wrote and tested the project, a few of the errors, I, I ran into a few errors which kept it from working. And some of the ways that I fixed this were using breaks to signal to the program when to stop counting and alert me as Previously, without the break, it just kept on counting and it didn't specifically alert me at that exact time. Uh, putting lines of code under blocks, which they correspond to because a few lines were, were not under the if block, which prevented them from actually working as a combined unit and making sure variables were valid before using them, such as the hour and second functions. And after all of this was done, I changed the design of the interface and messages displayed so they were more personalized and ran the whole program to ensure that all facets were working properly. So the project goals or what I wanted to come out of this were to create an interactive system which could be used to set timers and used to alert myself when needed to help me stay organized, uh, have a fully functioning interface which could be interacted with and uh, change certain variables like design, like you could play around with that. And also just to be able to understand why certain libraries are used while coding and their purpose in making uh, programmers jobs easier. Uh, so throughout, so the process again was first, uh, I had to get all the libraries installed using PyCharm. Uh, Rina, you've broken up actually. Uh, can and anybody and hear? Finally, yeah, yeah. Continue. You broke up. And then there. finally, oh yeah, my bad. And finally, using the T Kinter uh, library to create the interface to interact with. And throughout this process, I learned things such as the functions of all of these libraries modules, with the T Kinter library being used to create the dialog box. Uh, the time and date time modules being used to interpret time or how long to carry out each part. Wind sound being used to create a set sound to hear with play time or some other function. And arguments are just the values or specific data acted upon by the function to carry out their roles. Uh, any variables have to be predefined for the computer to understand the purpose of it, which I had a few issues with while uh, creating the code, because if it wasn't predefined, it couldn't really use it. And finally, how to set up and define all values and parts shown in the dialog box. So 
so these were the results. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much split up into all of the sections and all of the, so the import stuff is at the top. The actual while loop is in the middle between lines 10 to 25. And then the last part is the actual creating of the interface with all of the labels and specifics to create an organized platform. And also with like uh, the whole wind sound thing, I decided to go a, a more like changed up route as playtime is most commonly used to uh, create the sound. But since I wanted to try something different, I decided to use a uh, beep instead, which takes frequency and duration to determine the sound that is output. So you just put in different frequencies which changes like what the thing sounds like or like how high or low it is. And the duration just uh, changes and like that's in milliseconds. So it just changes uh, how long the whole sounds play for. And that's just what it looks like. That's just what the Kinter uh, user interface looks like when you run the program. And this bootcamp, while not teaching me everything, taught me the basics and helped me uh, execute it by teaching the fundamentals of Python and how to put together different elements of code to create a product. And within the program, within the bootcamp, we learned how to analyze different pieces and change functions to better interpret their roles. And then we learned the value of organization and how to under overcome certain syntax. And all of this laid the foreground for me to more deeply understand Python and enhance my skills. And overall, this program helped me un over overcome any difficulties coding and encouraged me to go further. Amazing, Rena. Very, very good. And you were you were the, the, the student of uh, the whole boot camp. You'll be getting a $25 gift card. Great. So next up, we have Samrit. Please share uh, two questions for Rina and also vote uh, for uh, the project that you feel is the best. Okay, so Samrit. Okay, so for my uh, Python project, I did the alarm clock. Um, so uh, this is just a traditional alarm clock using Python. Um, so it allows a, the user to select uh, their time in a 24 hour um, time format and then displays uh, a message when the time is reached based off the current time. So I went about this project by researching different ways people have coded this project. And throughout that, I found there are many ways to code this project. And, um, but there are a few key concepts that were consistent in all of those different variations of the code. That were the modules of day, time, daytime, and threading, the T Kinter library. So I um, learned these concepts um, and truly understood these concepts before even trying to code this. So I would have a more understanding of this code if it were to go wrong or there would be any bugs within it. So the three new things in this process to me were the time and daytime modules, threading, and combining uh, tkinter and geometry with, uh, to create the UI. So the time module is used to pause the program for one second between each time check, while the daytime module is used to get the current time and format as a string. And the threading module is used to create a new thread to run the alarm function, which continuously checks the alarm the current time and compare it to the alarm time. Then for the geometry with the uh, T Kinter, it uses the T Kinter option menus to create the pop up window to allow the user to select their alarm time. So, my goals for this project were to create an efficient and reliable alarm clock using the skills I learned in this Python bootcamp and uh, online. And one of my even more than that, I wanted to really understand all the concepts within this class and what I learned uh, online just to be able to code and learn the fundamentals of Python. So the result of this code was um, 
So on the left, uh, the leftmost image, there were the um, four modules. And then below that, there's the geometry that sets the pop-up window with the threading functions. And then uh, on the bottom of that picture is my alarm function with the while loop in it. This while loop just checks if the current time and the alarm time matches up. If, the, if they do, then it um, displays a message saying time to get up or your alarm is over. But if they don't, it keeps on printing the current time until the current time meets with the meets with the alarm time and then towards the middle and the rightmost images that's the ui for the um uh pop-up window that allows the user to select uh the their desired alarm time so um there's minutes hours and seconds there uh which all are displayed in pop-up windows and then the user clicks whichever, like whatever time they want, and then clicks select select alarm. And then that put, that is the alarm time. So in conclusion, I had a lot of fun learning these new concepts and coding this project. This class helped me uh, learn new skills in Python that were used in this project with the if self statements, tkinter library, the function, and the while statements. But even with these skills I learned in the class, I still faced many obstacles. And my one of my biggest obstacles was uh, learning how to and learning and implementing the threading module. And it took me a long time to figure this uh, figure an efficient way to implement this. So it wouldn't make my code any less efficient and it would also benefit my code a lot. And uh, that's it. Awesome job, Samrit. Thanks for sharing your journey, uh, your your challenges with threading, and uh, the amount of uh, learning that you did with Python. You all are simply amazing. I'm I'm so impressed uh, with each and every uh, presentation that I see. The the attention to detail that you've put in to present your project, and and really, so I'm I'm really proud of each and every one of you. So next up, let's go with Zaina. I'm so sorry, we're just going to go over, but we will almost be done. Uh, so Zaina, you want to share? Um, yes, one second, let me share my screen. Yes, we can see you. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so for my Python project, I chose to analyze which search alg algorithm is more efficient, a linear search algorithm or a binary search algorithm, and specifically by how much. Um, so as you can see in the image comparing linear and a binary search, in a linear search, the algorithm starts from the very first element of the array and compares it with the target element, which in this case is G. Um, if the target element is found at the current position, then the search is successful and the index of the target element is returned. But if the target element is not found at the current position, then and the algorithm moves on to the next element in the array and repeats the comparison. Um, the algorithm that continues to search through each element of the array um, until the target element is found or the end of the array is reached. Um, and if the target element is not found in the array, then the algorithm returns a special value to indicate that the element is not present, which you'll see later in my code was negative one. Um, and then on the other hand, in a binary search, the algorithm begins by taking the middle element of the array and compares it to the target value. Um, if the target value is equal to the middle element, then the search is successful and the position of the target value in the array is returned. But if the target value is less than the middle element, then the algorithm them searches the le left half of the array, um, takes the middle element of the left half and repeats the comparison. And if the target value is greater than the mil middle element, then I'll do the same on the right side. Um, and this process is basically just dividing the array in half, which continues until the target value is found, or if it's determined that the target value is not present in the array. Um, so although determining which uh, search algorithm is um, more efficient it might not seem very useful. It can actually be important in a number of ways. For example, if you consider a scenario where a hospital is trying to find patient records for a specific day in a large database, um, if the hospital uses an inefficient search algorithm, it could take a long longer to search through the entire database to find the relevant records. But if they use an efficient search algorithm, they can significantly reduce the time taken to retrieve the records. Um, and this can be really beneficial in emergency situations where time is of the essence and quick access to patient records can really make a difference in the patient's lives. 
Um, so in this project, my main goal was, uh, again, to determine which search algorithm um, was more efficient, a linear search algorithm or a binary search algorithm, and specifically by how much. Um, so overall, my code defines three functions, load words, a linear search, and binary search. The load words function takes a file name as an input, which in this case was a file of 10,000 words, which I found on the internet, to use as my elements in my search algorithms. Um, it reads the contents of the file using the read lines method and returns the list of the words in the file. The linear search function takes the list of words and a word to find as input and searches the list linearly um, for the word. The function and then iterates through this list of words, comparing each word to the word to be found and if the word is found its position in the list is returned and if the word is not found the negative one is returned um the binary search function takes a, a sorted list of words and a word to find as an input and searches through the list using the binary search algorithm if the word is found then the function returns the position of the word and then if it's not found the negative one is returned again um and then the code enters a loop that prompts the user to enter a word to search if the user enters exit with a capital e the loop terminates um, otherwise the code calls the link linear search and binary search functions to search for the word in the list and measure the time taken by each function um, using the time module, module in nanoseconds. Um, the code then prints the results of the searches, the time taken by each function, and the improvement ratio of linear search over binary search. Um, the loop repeats this, prompting the user to enter another word to search. Um, then my results. In this project, I found that the majority of the time, the binary search algorithm far outperforms the linear search. Um, and this was because in the linear search, the algorithm had to go through the list one by one in order to find the target word. But in the binary search algorithm, the algorithm was able to condense the number of possible words more efficiently, since all it had to do was divide the possible number of words by two until it reached the target word. Um, and the only time when the linear search is faster than the binary search is when the target word is at the start um, position or extremely close to it, since it only needs to iterate a couple of times to get to the target word, whereas the binary search has to go through the process of dividing the number of possible words before getting to the target word. Um, and then overall, I feel that this Python uh, bootcamp helped me a lot when uh, I was working on this project. In the past, I had taken a couple of Python courses, but I never really learned anything from them because it was mostly just an instructor talking and explaining code while I just sat there and listened. Um, but I feel that through actively interacting hands-on with code um, was really helpful. And there were a lot of times in this project where my code wasn't really working and I had no idea why, but after rewatching the Zoom recordings, I was able to figure out what went wrong, um, which really helped me understand my code more. And through this process, I've gained practical experience and a deeper understanding of Python programming, and I'm excited to apply it in future projects beyond this one as well. Um, and I can just show my code really quickly. Um, can you see my screen? Obviously, see your presentation, Zaina, not your code. Okay. Um, it's okay. I can just like uh, end it here. I think it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So Zaina, this was a wonderful presentation and I want you to continue this um, a linear versus binary search and, and uh, create it into a passion project that you further use it for uh, the real life application. And, and, and that's just not going to help you with uh, college applications, but to further your learning as well. So great job, Zaina. Wonderful, wonderful project. Great job. Keep up the good work. Uh, next up, uh, we have Yashmita. Yashmita, you want to go ahead? All right, let me share my screen. Okay. Yes, we see you, Yashmita. Okay. Um, okay, can you see my presentation? Yes, please. Okay, so I did mine on encoding messages. And my project details are like, it's just encoding the messages, encoding and decoding. And the language I used was Python. And the version was 3.11. And I used Python Idle and Visual Code Studio. And my project details was to like create an application that allows users to encode and uh, decode. That's supposed to say decode, sorry. And like messages using Python libraries like base 64 and Tinker. So I can show you my thing real quick. All right, can you see my screen? 
Ah, uh, yes, VC code, um, Yashmita. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I run this up, if I run this code, it's going to give me this um, message encoder and decoder. And if I type in like, hello, or like anything, and I encode it, this is like the encoded version. And if I decode it, this is what it says. Like I can do this with my name. I can do this with anything I type in. And that's basically what I did for my project. And so my, my Python project, allows users to input messages and decode them using a combination of base64 and encoding like a key a secret key which is what it says up here and the encode message with the parentheses its function is to take the message and encode it using the base64 library and then returns the resulting encoding messages and then the decode messages function takes um, an encoded message as an input and returns the resulting decoded message. And it's basically you just loop it and you do it as many times as you want with any text you want. And this project, I'm really new to like coding and everything. Like this is my first time like doing like a real like project with it and like my first time learning it. So I think I learned a lot and like I'm glad I learned the basics of coding because I want to pursue something in the computer field. So yeah, this is my presentation. Awesome, Yashmita, uh, very good work. A big round of applause to Yashmita. Okay, so next up, wait, Samir, uh, you wanna go ahead with Samir? Please ask two questions uh, to Zena and Yashmita, and also please vote for uh, what you, which one you think is the best project, okay? So yeah, Samir? Can you hear me? Oh, did you go already? Or yeah, go uh, ahead. No, I didn't. Okay, please go. Um, yeah, just give me one sec. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah. All right, there we go. All right. So this is my presentation about my desktop alarm clock app that I created using PyCharm in the uh, Python version 3.11. So um, the reason I decided to do a Python alarm clock for my uh, personal project for this bootcamp was because I have a general problem of missing class and just in general not waking up on time. So I wanted to work on creating an alarm clock that I could integrate using my uh, speakers and playing a sound to help try to get myself up in the morning. Um, so some background uh, information on my project was some of the issues I faced uh, when I was initially doing some research for this project was figuring out how the tkinter uh, libraries worked and how to import them and how to use the various methods and modules like provided by tkinter. So once I was able to figure all this out, I didn't really have much trouble using uh, creating the program as I have some knowledge in uh, Java and JavaScript, but overall, the uh, Python alarm clock application wasn't too bad. In the future, um, speaking about the project goals and future implementation, I want to create an alarm clock that actually can be integrated with uh, the speakers and the play sound uh, libraries. I was asking, uh, I believe it was Aloni uh, on his presentation, how to import that. And I think using the information that he provided, I could do that and further this code that I created now. Um, moving on to the process, uh, you can see here on the left some of the tkinter modules. So as I mentioned before, I had some trouble learning how the tkinter libraries worked and as well as the time and the date time libraries worked. As you'll see later in my code, I imported those libraries. And I wanted to just in general figure out how the various tkinter methods work because it seemed like a very useful library to import, seeing as it was pretty easy to create a GUI. And then here you can see the actual results. So on the left, you can see my code. I'm not sure if you guys can see my cursor, but here at the top, we're importing the libraries that we need to use, obviously, uh, dekinter time and date time. And then we're going to create a window, give it a name. So as you can see, the gifted gabber alarm clock and setting a size to it, again, setting the font and um, uh, creating the font for the current time, as well as the text box entry. And then basically, we just get the alarm clock to run uh by setting the time up here and 
every time it loops down here, this window.main loop, it'll set the current time. And this check alarm method basically sets it so that it'll check the time that the user inputs into the text box entry and compare it to the current time. And if it is, it'll print the statement, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. And then uh, in conclusion, after completing the bootcamp, I can confidently say that I have a solid base in terms of Python knowledge. And I think I could use what I've learned here to implement it into my future projects. Prior to this bootcamp, I, as I mentioned before, I had some knowledge related to Java and JavaScript, but after learning how simplistic Python is, I can definitely see myself using this language more in future projects. Thank you very much. Amazing, Samir. It's so nice that you took your personal mission to uh, create a project. That's really, really very nice, uh, trying to solve a, a real life problem. So great job. It was a very interesting presentation. Uh, next, Thank we have much. Ananya. Uh, Ananya is the last. Do we have anybody else that I missed out on? Uh, please let me know. Well, is Krishna here? Krishna? Krishna? Krishna is not here. So Ananya is going to be our last. So please vote and please ask two questions to Samir um, and, and just hang in there and we'll be almost, almost be done. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Ananya. Yes, hello, uh, my name is Ananya and my project for the Python course was the um, binary search. So essentially what the binary search is is a program that will look for a particular type of element uh, that we specify from some type of list array or uh, data source like an S SPR or SPV sheet. Sorry, is my screen? Uh, yeah, we can see your screen. Um, if we can see your screen, Ananya, go ahead. Okay, Let's, that's good. Yeah. So. Essentially what we do in the binary search algorithm is it's a very efficient way to search for an element, a particular element in a long list, which is often stored as an array in Python. So the algorithm works by dividing the list in half um, at each iteration and checking whether the middle element of the sublist is the one that we're looking for. So if the middle element is not the desired element, the sublist is again divided in half and the process is repeated until the element is found or the sub sublist size is reduced to zero. So some real world applications of this, it's a very common search that's often used for smaller scale tasks like searching for a particular word in a dictionary or finding an item in a sorted array, searching for a specific record in a phone book or searching for a file in a filing system. So for my code, the first step was, or step number one was defining the function. So in order to do this, you can see my line of code that is meant to define the actual function. So I say defining binary underscore search, the name of my method of the binary search. Uh, and then I'm putting in parentheses two parameters, which is the array of, or the array, which is meant to be a sorted list of integers and the integer that I wanna find in the list, which is stored in the variable X. So my second step, is defining two different variables. So I set um, the variables called, two variables called low and high to represent the indices of the first and last elements of the list respectively. And then after I've set these two variables, step three, which is initializing the while loop or creating the while loop. So I set I create a while loop that's meant to filter through a certain parameter, which would be when low is less than or equal to high. And then in step four, I define what happens in this while loop. So inside the while loop, we calculate the midpoint index between the low and high indices using integer division between the low and high um, variables and we call this variable and we set it to a variable called mid so we check if the value of the midpoint index in the list is equal to our target value which we stored as x previously and if it is we return the midpoint index if the value of the midpoint index is greater than our target value 
we update the high index to be one less than the midpoint index. And then this is essentially because we, um, we know that the target value must be to the low of the midpoint index in a sorted list. So if the value of the midpoint index is less than our target value, we update the low index to be one greater than the high index. This is because we know that the target value must be to the right of the midpoint index in a sorted list. If we exit the while loop without finding the target value, we turn, return the value negative one to indicate that no value was found. The value x that we stored previously and that we're looking for wasn't found in the sorted list. So if we exit the while loop without finding it, we return negative one. And in the main section of the code, we created a sorted list of integers called my underscore list and a variable called target underscore uh, x that we want to find in the value. Uh, and we end up, we end up, as you can see here in the result section. Uh, so the command that we put in in the main that we run or the part that we are running to test this is we create an array of some values. In this instance, it's um, just any array that we chose previously. And we define some integer x or some element x. And then we're searching results equals binary underscore search with the two parameters. So if then I say if the result is not equal to negative one, which was what was returned if x was not found in the array, we print the result, the, um, this value of x. So in this situation, fig was found at a certain index and then the index value. If it's not found, then we say the value of x fig was not found in the list. And as you can see here, for this particular test, um, it returns fig is found at index five. And that's how the binary search is done. Thank you. Any questions? OK, um, great job. Um, please vote. Uh, ask uh, Ananya two questions. Uh, did I miss out anybody? Uh, did I get everybody? I think Krishna was the only one who did present. So I just want to say a big thank you and a big kudos. Um, great job on each and every project um, and your dedication to learn something new. I know it wasn't easy balancing uh, school work and learning a new coding language and preparing a presentation and come here today. So hats off to you guys. I want you to continue learning. It, this doesn't end here. I want you to uh, solve more and more problems uh, with Python coding and great job and it seems like Zaina uh, has won with the most votes if you've not voted please do uh, you'll be receiving a gift card and Rina for the best student so until then I'll see you guys uh, we have a lot of summer programs that are coming up as well and please continue coding and contributing so wonderful job I'm gonna miss you all guys and uh, I get so emotional after every final presentation of my course because oh my god i'm not going to be seeing i mean virtually seeing you or communicating with you but stay in touch bye now <laughs>